On this episode, I talk about India's grandparents' risk and rewards and long form Facebook posts. (laughs) I don't even know where that came from. They, Nerd, Chuck, and this is episode 126 of the Ask Gary V Show. I am very fired up. We're periscoping in the background, which is exciting. A tremendous product owned by Twitter, competitor to my startup investment in Meerkat, two incredible companies battling it out for live streaming leadership. Uh, look out for Facebook and Snapchat in that game, by the way. I still just feel it in my tummy. Tum, tum, tum. Uh, Really, really sad that I missed yesterday. Kind of missed the show. Feel like we're clearly in the golden era. We've talked a lot about that. It was fun to have the winners the other day. Whole crews in the house. The Periscope is adding an extra dynamic. You know, it's funny. I feel like there's more people watching, even more than watching. And So my energy is a little high this morning. Excited this is gonna get out early. No pressure, DRock. and uh, that's where we're at. So I'm, I, I wanted to make the show, a little, the show a little tighter today. I feel like they've been running a little long. I had to do this in Wine Library somewhere around the 400s uh, where they were getting into 39, 40. And they were becoming epic. So India, let's get into the show. Good try. Good try, kiddo. <laughs> yeah. All right, from Brandon. Uh, which of your Where are the show t-shirts? Do you have yours yet? The two I bought for you? They haven't arrived yet. All right, you'll wear it as soon as you get it, right? Yes. Now, do they have like female cuts or does that website not have it? I think they do, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, they did. Okay, can't wait to see you rocking that. <laughs> Expect you to rock it every day of your life. <laughs> India? Brandon asks, which of your views do you think has changed the most in the past five years and why? Oh, coming out strong. Which of my views has changed the most in the last five years and why? Yeah. Whew. I'm pretty lying, you know, I, I yell at everybody to not draw lines in the sand, but the four or five things I actually care about are pretty hardcore lines in the sand. Um, you know, what, what, I'll talk about some things that have changed. I, I think that I'm a better communicator as a CEO for VaynerMedia than I was with Wine Library. I think that I, hate confrontation and negativity so much that I lally-gagged and it wasn't easy for me to give critical feedback. I mean, even people in this room have gotten critical feedback and have fundamentally benefited from it and it's not something that I'm sure I could have delivered as a younger CEO. It was just, I didn't like it. I, I literally kind of took the, the, the role of like, well, if they're not winning in this environment, then eventually I'll just, you know, they'll get fired. If they can't figure it out, it's so good, they'll get fired and I wasn't providing that value. So I think, I think, micromanaging along the way instead of letting complete capitalism and complete openness kind of rule the day is something that I've changed. Like, a, you know, I don't have that many, you know what's funny about that question, Brandon, is I'm, I'm over the top passionate lines in the sand as equal as I am to being willing to change them. I always like to say I'm a mobile, mo, mobile, mobile, no, no, no. What's that? Moldable, thank you. Moldable dictator, uh, movable too, and moldable, <laughs> make me. Uh, moldable dictator, uh, because I think that the thing the team will talk about is if you can debate it out and if it makes sense to me, I'm willing to try, I'm willing to test. Um, so I don't get too passionate about it. I'm trying to think, kids, family balance, work-life balance, profit, top line revenue, social media, not waste money. Um, I feel myself changing on YouTube a little bit in the current moment. Like, you know, Jeff Nicholson on the paid team is really selling me hard on pre-roll YouTube and its value prop, and so that's a rabbit hole I'm intrigued by. Growth hacking, I think I was cynical to the term. I didn't love the term. And so I would kind of like zing it because I thought it was, I thought like Ryan and other people in it I thought were really great players, but I thought the term was getting huckstery, but but I very much value kind of, you know, understanding, uh, you know, Results-driven marketing, so maybe that. Um, 
Are you any more risk averse in your investments? Risk adverse in my investments? No, but I, I, I definitely think it, I struggled a little bit to calibrate the $25 million in Vayner RSC versus Angel 25 and 50K for the first three to four months. Um, but I haven't changed my point of view there. It's still jockey and horse. There is something I've really changed my mind on. I've brought it up recently. Damn it, I'm so pissed. I'm good at this top of mind stuff. Um, I'll keep going with the show um, and see if I can dig it up or we'll come back to it in another episode. I'm very into changing my mind. I'll, I'll give you a, a preview to changing my mind. I will bash Facebook advertising in three to four years. Bash it. We'll say that it's overpriced and doesn't deliver because that's what always happens. The same way I bash banner pre-roll and the same way I bash SEM to not being as good as people think it is, those are my calling cards along with email marketing. Um, I'm definitely way more down on Twitter today than I was three years ago. So I don't know if it's like, you know, it's not like a religion change, uh, but the tactics I believe in constantly change. It's why I kind of write similar books over and over. Sid, you're smiling. Something happening on Periscope? They want to ask questions. Periscope, why don't you calm your goddamn roll for a few seconds and let me do the show. Um, and so, uh, my tactics change a lot, but like, you know, the core things I believe in being good to people, bring value, things of that nature haven't shifted so much. Joe asks, when looking at potential investments that you might be on the fence about, how do you balance risk versus reward? I always, always, always dramatically value reward over risk. Hey, this is such a great episode to do this um, in, in the context of everything going on. When I invested in Meerkat, it was obvious that Periscope was gonna launch within the week of my investment and that it was completely backed on Twitter's uh, infrastructure and that Meerkat was gonna get shut down. As a matter of fact, Meerkat got shut down on Twitter before I made the investment. But the upside was so great if they were able to win that game. In the world of, remember Facebook's attempt to slow down Snapchat, right, with Poke? Like, you know, it, the leader doesn't always win, right? Remember, Blockbuster was gonna go after Netflix, you know, with their service. Remember, Walmart's gonna crush Amazon six years ago. Happens all the time, and so the reward was much greater than the risk, even though the risk was very obvious. Uh, I'm always, always going for the upside. The other thing is, I, I bet on the jockey a lot. You know, I bet on the jockey a lot. And so, investing in someone is not necessarily always just about that startup. You know, if they're a true entrepreneur, and I feel they're a true entrepreneur, they've got two, three, four, five, six. There's a, a female-driven company right now in New York that I just bet on that I'm so obsessed with. I think she's gonna win in this one, but like, there's no doubt in my mind she's gonna win multiple times. And I think, um, I think Travis at Uber was the final nail in my coffin that it's always about the jockey. Uh, if you can bet on the right jockey, you're gonna win. And so, um, reward over risk every time. I'm, I'm on the offense in life. You know, I, I do not value, and I feel the far majority of people watching the show are on the defense, I really do. I feel like when I quantify the world that I know, 70, 80% of the people fall into defense. They're telling you, you and themselves why not versus why it's going to work. And I do believe that blind optimism uh, and naivete and self-confidence are enormously delicious traits that allow you to win more often than you lose because it's truly a net-net game. You can lose 800 times. There's four to five substantial bets that I made in driving VaynerMedia this year. Two of them are really working, three of them are not. We won big. That's how I look at it. I'm not gonna cry about the three. Uh, there's, no, there's no crying in business or baseball. Flores. Crystal asks, what's your strategy with Facebook long form posts? Ah, I've been waiting for this moment. It's the one I picked. I'm super excited about this question. You know, it's really interesting. I've been really challenging myself. You know, we're bucking a quarter into this show and I'm like, what can I do to make the show better and better and better? Clearly the entertainment value has gone up because we've found the characters, the context, some of the fun little things, you know, but how do I make the show better? Depth, right? Entertainment, utility. Entertainment, utility. I need to balance them. And so this falls into probably the strongest utility play that we've executed uh, on the show. And so really get cozy. You may want to even pause this right now. Go get yourself a nice glass of wine. Really settle in because this is a very important moment in the show's history. Um, the question is what is my strategy, right? Two great things are going to come out of this answer. This is going to be your favorite answer of all time. 
because two things are gonna come out of it. Number one, I'm gonna make you understand why when I do things on social networks that confuse you in lieu of me writing a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook and then you telling me that's not native and many of you have commented like, Gary, isn't that what you say not to do in your book? Yes, in a net net score, if you look at my stuff, I'm following that blueprint. But things change and more importantly, the number one thing that I'm worried about that so many people here do is they don't challenge themselves. Back to the first question. I always want to put myself out of business, want to call my bluff. Before somebody writes a blog post saying Gary Vee is wrong, I want to write a blog post saying Gary Vee is wrong, right? God, I hate their person. Um, you know, I want to do that. So, so I'm always testing myself. So I wrote a long form piece on Facebook two weeks ago, right? Two, two Saturdays ago, I just did it. Like not talking to the team on a Saturday, just did it. Sandra just went to sleep, Misha and Lizzie were tied up with something. I'm like, all right, got a minute here. Let me just, this has been on my mind. What, what, you know, I've been seeing some things in the trenches. I've been feeling something in my gut, my intuition. Let me write a long post. Let me treat Facebook like a blog, like a website. That's really been sitting in my mind. I did it, it did extremely well. A lot of reach, a lot of sharing, a lot of engagement. And I'm like, huh. So I wrote another one that day. Actually, not wrote another one, reused things I wrote on Medium that we did months ago. And that did really well. Did another one, and that did really well. As a matter of fact, DRock, let's roll it out right now. Here are some screenshots of the same exact article being written natively, long form, doesn't feel like a native execution, but in the feed of Facebook versus a picture and a link to go out of Facebook. And that, my friends, what you're seeing right now in DRock, I want you to take over the screen, jump into like splitting me, I don't know if it's here or if it's here, but let's keep going, just keep kind of going here. I want them to really grasp the numbers. It's just working. And so, that's what I'm doing. I'm always challenging myself, I'm always testing. I did long form Instagram, that surely doesn't feel native, right? The, you know, I think we could all agree that the, the right hooks, tag your friends, all that things, that, um, that doesn't feel native to Instagram, so it's supposed to be nice pictures and artistic. These are the things that happen, right? These are the things that happen. You've always got to test, and uh, I think I've hit, hit on something, and I'm really excited about passing it on to you, and I expect the disproportionate amount of the Vayner Nation right now to write a long-form Facebook post within the next 24 hours uh, in whatever shape or form. You're an NGO trying to raise money, tell a story, you're trying to sell some t-shirts, you just want to talk to your friends. Uh, this is a page dynamic, this is the, my page, not my account, so you've got to take that into account. If you've got a business page, roll it, write it, try it, big picture, long form, feel it. I think you're going to see results. And again, I look at Facebook's algorithm the way I look at Google's search results. They'll keep changing things. They keep doing that. And so right now it feels right. By always challenging myself, I was able to get results and then double down on them and I will squeeze that orange until I get every ounce of juice out of it and then I'll just find another orange. And that's what you do. And so whether that's another orange within a Facebook environment or if that's Snapchat or if that's boogabugaduga.com, wherever it is next, I will squeeze the mother orange. Do you like that? Yeah. All right. It's true. What's the scope think? They're trying to open that website. It's not working. Well, yeah, that's right. We'll be ready for you guys later. You guys are getting a preview. This is a video from Sue Zimmerman. Sue! Terrifying, Gary. Sorry, India. Oh. Hey, Gary V. It's Sue B here, the hashtag Instagram expert. And I just want to ask you how do you decide which projects to say yes to and which ones to pass on? Because I have a shit ton of projects and opportunities coming my way on a regular basis and it's often a challenge to know how to prioritize which ones to put at the top and which ones to take a pass on. So I thank you for your time and I look forward to your answer. So I'm really pumped you asked this. A lot of entrepreneurs, self kind of, you know, one-off uh, freelancers, different things of that nature. I've got a really good answer for you and it came to me immediately, unlike the first question. Uh, I, if I were you, hearing what I'm hearing, would continue to raise your price on every project substantially and choose the ones that pay you the most if that's what you want. Uh, I would do the ones that network you with the most networkable or biggest brand or the kind of people that you want to be around. And so I would, here's what I would do. When, when you have a supply and demand issue at hand, 
you know, I mean a high class problem, right? Too much coming in, it's going well, and you're trying to pick which ones. It's all about raising the stakes, whether that's a better networking opportunity, famous people, rich people, connected people, nice people, whatever makes you tick, or money. So if it's $3,000 a month or $2,000 a project, then it needs to be five and 3,500. And if it's five and 3,500, then it needs to be 7,500 and 6,000. Like, raise your price. There's a lot of you right now that are doing services uh, that only scale you, that are not building your business because you're not understanding how to raise your prices. Let the market say no. Let the market say no. Let the market say no. Let me tell you the story about my first speaking gig ever. My first speaking gig ever. Never spoke, got a random email at Wine Library. They're like, we want you to speak at this internet conference. I'm like, okay, cool, amazing. I get on the phone, guy tells me about the, the conference, how much do you want to get paid. I think I've told this story on the show before. No? Oh, good. good. This is a good one. On the phone, how much would you like to get paid? I'm like, oh crap, what the hell do you get paid to speak? I'm like, all right, throw out something big. You know, I'm a good negotiator. You know, I've been buying a lot of wine for the last 10 years. I'm like, all right, $5,000, <laughs> right? Remember, like, you guys know me as me now. Like, this was literally like, it's like you saying $5,000, Stefan, right? You'd be pumped as shit right now to speak for, right you'll speak, you'll stand there <laughs> naked, right? So, so, so I was like, $5,000. He goes, okay. I go, crap. That was way too fast. So I'm like, okay, now we're talking about logistics. I'm like, all right, I gotta get more money out of this. I think I got crushed on this negotiation. So I get to the end, I'm like, okay, to recap, 30 minute talk, I knew it was an hour, 30 minute talk in Miami, July 17th. He goes, no, 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 he goes, we need you for an hour. I'm like, oh. I go, well, that's $10,000 for the speech. He goes, okay, great. I go, still too little. And I kept raising it until the market at that point settled me in between five and 15, which was unbelievable and like blew my mind. It was a market I didn't know. And, and obviously it's grown since then. And so uh, I really think that you need to keep pushing the boundaries of money or upside opportunity. I would do stuff for free if you thought it was going to lead to happiness, paying forward to somebody you believe in or something down the line for you without expecting it. Remember that whole thesis. Uh, so that's what I would do. I would pick the ones that you're just pushing, you're pushing the pricing, you're pushing the pricing. Alicia asks, is using a forum to build a community a dying practice? Alicia, Alicia, you know what's funny? I'm a very big believer in this. Mm-hmm. Nah. That's a pendulum swinging, right? So forums, then it's all social and it's open. I actually think forums are the future, not uh, the past. I'm going out on a limb here and I'm gonna say that people are gonna start closing down things. It's kind of like social, right? Facebook, Twitter open, along came Snapchat, right? Closed, private. And I think after this generation goes through that, the next generation, the eight-year-olds, the seven-year-olds, they're gonna want open again because they haven't felt this generation play that we all felt with Facebook and Twitter. This is what we do. We we do it with celebrities, build them up, crash them down, and then the comeback. I mean, we want Britney back, bitch. You know, like that's what we want to do, right? A-Rod, I mean, are you watching what's going on with A-Rod? We will build you up, we will destroy you, we will build you right back up. We love it. We absolutely, outside of murder, we'll do it for anybody. It's unbelievable. And so, I think forums, because people are gonna want to close. I mean, look what's going on with the social networks. Pinterest, Facebook. Twitter, they're cutting out their ecosystem. Less API unless they're really valuing from it, right? Like, you know, YouTube doesn't want MCM selling for half a billion dollars and them not making any money. People are gonna shut it down. And so I think, look, we've talked about the VChat, the Gary V app we tried. Like, owning the data and creating a CRM and keeping it in your world is valuable. I mean, as a matter of fact, Actually, we wanted to attack some stuff here. We almost ended with the show. I want to do this whole Facebook thing, right? So we've got some imagery behind us. We're going to show them. Are we going to do a video? So one of the things that I've been thinking a lot about is the show's exploding. We're doing well on, on YouTube. We're exploding on Facebook. But the way the Facebook algorithm works, you're not seeing this all the time. So here, for example, let me take a step out of the show for a second. Here's a, are we doing a video? I think we're doing a quick little video. Yeah, we'll a video and something. Watch this. Head over to facebook.com slash Gary. Hover over the liked button and hit get notifications. This way, you'll never miss an episode of the show. All right, now that gave you the opportunity to now always get the show in your feed, but I'm at the mercy 
of Facebook. I don't want to be at the mercy of Facebook. I don't want to be at the mercy of Google. I don't want to be at the mercy of anybody, which is why building your own email list, building your own forum on top of the web, which is what they're building, they're building products on top of the web, is a very intriguing and important thing. And so I want to build up, you know, uh, making sure the, uh, the algorithm shows my stuff. I want to build up my subscriptions on YouTube. I want to build up my Gary VIP email list. And having a side forum, and I did it with Wine Library TV. There was a forum for Wine Library TV, and it was important. It was an important place where I could kind of, and so I don't think it's going away. I think it's, it's fine. But much like the Facebook question, getting somebody to leave where they actually want to consume it, because time is the value prop, you have to give a value prop. You have to make that form valuable. If you're the celebrity or the zealous celebrity or the personality, you need to spend time in there. When I stopped spending time in the Wine Library TV forum, the community had been built and they kept themselves together, but it lost momentum. It definitely lost growth and over time it waned. And that's what's just gonna happen, so that's what's happening there. So cool, we checked the box on getting people. That's a really important thing. If you wanna make sure uh, you're seeing the show uh, in your Facebook feed, make sure you follow that. Uh, and I'm feeling pretty good. Anything else, we're good? We got the detailed oriented third question. Feeling pretty good. Yeah, okay. Uh, question of the day. Damn, I had a good one yesterday. I gotta start writing this shit down. Did I forward anything to you guys? I thought I almost did. No. Damn, I really liked it too. I really wanted the answer for it. <laughs> All right. Question of the day. Ask India. I don't even want to do it. <laughs> what, are your, what are your grandparents' names, either side of the family? Oh, I like that. Now, your grandparents were featured. Yes, they were. So cute. My grandparents were featured in the LA Times because they relived their honeymoon like 62 years later or something. Picture. <laughs> <laughs> you keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. 